All right. Welcome, 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 everyone, to Cultivating Kingdom Culture. We have a special guest tonight. Sorry, my mic's falling down. We have a special guest tonight, Fiorella Giordano, a friend of mine. Uh, She is from Waxahachie, Texas, a place that is dear to my heart. I went to Bible school down there. And uh, let me get this music turned down, and I'm going to bring her on. All right, Fiorella, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? And I'm doing awesome. Um, yeah, it's it's been real good and busy. I just graduated my oldest, so one down, four to go. And uh, we just got done with that this weekend, so I'm kind of recovering from all the work that went into that. But um, that's what I've been up to. What have you been up to recently? Oh, gosh. I have been spending a lot of time with family, so helping my sister with her little ones. And that's basically what my weekend was about, really, yeah. my whole last week. So it's been really good. Why don't you uh, just give everybody a little bit of background of yourself, kind of just what you've been involved in in the past, ministry-wise and just life-wise, and just kind of what your background is? Um, okay, so ministry-wise, I think that um, you know I've been doing itinerant ministry for about four years. Um, my emphasis has been mostly in the prophetic, um, but it's been shifting more into a governmental um, scope, not governmental as in um, the sphere of government, but more um, into the apostolic. Um, I think that the way that I can best characterize what I do is um, I feel like my life verse is what no eye has seen or ear heard. So I'm really called to bring forth um, and unveil mysteries, but also break limitations from, um, from just the people that I'm called to. So That's the gist of it. You know, I'm a futurist by nature, so I approach um, everything um, from that lens. So I have a huge emphasis into, you know, the powers of the age to come, what it looks like to um, live in the new era that we're in and coming out of old wineskins and that kind of thing. Um, A major part of my revelation goes into um, technology and um, science and the supernatural, obviously. So I think that's kind of the gist of it. But I mean, you could fill in, um, you know, I'm a futurist, thought leader and um, architect. I think that probably characterizes me the best. You know, I love that term futurist um, because it's not religious, right? Like mm-hmm. people could hear that and have no clue that you operate in the prophetic have no clue that you know jesus right that is oh you're a futurist you kind of think about the future awesome you know it just I, I in general i believe that we need a language upgrade in a mm-hmm. lot of ways in a lot of areas um not to be nitpicky but just so that we connect with the culture uh in a way that doesn't seem like oh i okay never mind i already know about that i already you know my my grandma talked about that or whatever you know what i mean i just think we need a language upgrade and i think that we could do a better job at that um so that's one thing that really uh i don't know kind of blew me away when i when i came down to waxahachie and attended your your meeting um the the singularity i think it was your was it your first meeting that you Mm -hmm. had yeah yeah, of that specific yeah um just i heard all these terms i'm like I haven't heard that term before, but oh my gosh, that's such, that's like the best term I've ever heard for that. You know, there's just this new language I was hearing and it really in, inspired me to challenge myself uh, in creating new language and discovering new ways of saying things. Because the reality is when you hear a word and, and again, you know, there's, there's always going to be phrases and words that we use uh, forever, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I think that new language can help you think about a topic from a different angle, mm-hmm. right? So like when you said ecosystem of heaven, we were talking about the whole regional thing. I was like, oh my gosh, like all these thoughts came from different directions because when you think about an ecosystem, you think about all that's involved in an ecosystem. And then you think, well, how, how can this apply in, in the spiritual realm? How can this mm-hmm. apply to the kingdom? And then you think about all these. And so I just, I was really inspired by, by the new language um, that you were using. 
And mm -hmm. um, I've even borrowed a few of them in some of my conversations, like ecosystem and people are like, oh, I love that term. I'm like, well, I kind of stole it, you know, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's, it, it really inspired me. And honestly, really, it, it is the reason why I came back to Michigan and started these broadcasts was mm -hmm. because I just, I knew that I was supposed to communicate more uh, and, and help people understand more about the apostolic in a different way than it had been done before. Mm -hmm. um, because again, ap the apostolic is one of those things where it's like, oh, I, I know, I don't need to hear anything more about that. It doesn't apply to my life. Actually, yeah. it does apply to your life because Jesus said that we were all apostolos, you know, in John 17, mm -hmm. when he said, Father, just as you apostolos to me, I apostolos them, which is that's the Greek word where we get apostle. And uh, we're, we're all sent to be influencers of culture, cultural mm -hmm. architects, cultural engineers, wherever our sphere of influence is, regardless of its ministry, uh, like, uh, you know, vocational ministry or it's the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, man, when I left that meeting, I came back to Michigan. I'm, I'm like, OK, I got to get something started. And that's when, <laughs> I, when I started doing these. So that was really inspiring for me. But um, you, you talked about some people don't understand some of these phrases. And, and I know that uh, it depends on what stream that you're in, but we have a lot mm -hmm. of people that watch for different uh, streams. So when, when you say the new era and the, the coming out of the old wineskin, just kind of tell me what you mean by that. Gosh, I mean, it's such a loaded question. There's so many, you know, lenses for that. Um, yeah. I think that the best way to describe it is that um, there has been a modality of ways of doing things in the past and um, they have worked. And sometimes, um, those really good structures, um, will limit where God wants to take things in the future. Mm -hmm. So we have to come out of, um, sometimes, you know, those old structures entail an old understanding. And when God is upgrading your understanding, then you need a new structure, a new framework to be able to sustain that understanding and flow out of that understanding. So with a new era, you know, there is a new understanding. Um, it's not necessarily always like a new revelation, but it's looking at revelation from a new standpoint and an expanded point of view that um, re will require a different framework of approaching things. So going from, um, let's say, uh, more of a religious structure to more of a, um, a structure that um, embodies more um, there's not a duality in the sense of like, there's not, no, it's not secular and Christian. It's, it's one thing that God is wanting to do. Like sometimes we have in the old wine scheme, we have created these compartments and that, you know, that process has limited, um, the expression. So we have to come out of the old understanding in order to be able to come into the new understanding that has a new wine skin. And that's how you shift into that new era space, which is really um, an age, a dispensation from heaven that is is wanting to release new things. But the new things, the new wine is not going to flow through an old wine skin. Right. Definitely. Um, so when I came down to Waxahachie and um, attended that meeting with you, you were speaking about opening the gates and regions. And when you kind of talked about how the Lord had sent you mm -hmm. to Waxahachie and just some of the different things about the land. I was like, dude, she was totally sent here apostolically in the sense that God sent you there because there were things that needed to be uprooted, torn down and destroyed spiritually, you know, in the spiritual mm -hmm. realm so that you could plan and build. And God was wanting to do something in that region. So he sent you there for a specific task, a specific mm -hmm. purpose and to influence the culture. Uh, and to be a cultural engineer, you know, a cultural mm -hmm. architect for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, and you were kind of describing the, the, the canopy, opening the gates. And, and could you just kind of go into some of that? Because I've talked a lot about regional transformation and, you know, how the apostolic is sent to do that. But the way you described it was just, again, was new language. It just helped me to see it with a new lens. Um, and so could you share a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that, you know, we have understood um, the apostolic in this way that it's like you go in and you take ground and it's really hard and it's really difficult. And you sort of have to, you know, 
Um, obviously, you know, we're partnering with a prophetic word, but in that process, we forget that um, there are so many layers um, that God, um, that are part of the design that sometimes we tend to only focus on that particular, your particular assignment in that region. And, um, and we forget that the land is very much involved in the process, in the design, in the partnership of the whole thing. So it's yeah. not just the heavenly atmosphere, but the sphere of creation that we've sort of just forgotten about or maybe not really thought about. And I think that God um, is wanting to integrate that understanding in the new wineskin so that we're not necessarily going in with this um, domineering um, intent, but it's an intent to partner with what God has put in place. Now, I'm not talking about partnering with curses and, you know, all those things. I'm, I'm talking about um, you know, we, we've been we've become really good at identifying um, spiritual curses or, you yeah. know, curses on the land or whatever. But what about the blessings of the land and how can we um, partner with that blessing? Because um, when Adam and Eve fell, um, you know, they were removed from the garden and um, we haven't really understood that part of, um, you know, the toil that that Adam shifted into was the fact that there that the land Eden was no longer partnering with him. Mm, that's good. You know what I mean. And so the restoration that God that that Jesus brings by the his death and resurrection is that a reconciliation of those things. But um, so we are a new creation in God, but creation, according to Romans eight, has been subjected to futility in the hope that we would set it free. So part of the apostolic assignment is asking questions like how um, is not necessarily just about, you know, um, sending people out and um, expanding, you know, the kingdom um, from this one specific scope, um, right. but by just going and, and spreading, you know, what the message that God has given us, right. but really how do we bring creation into a place regionally speaking that um, where we honor the destiny of creation itself and we honor um, the role that creation and the land have in bringing forth that assignment and um, and start partnering with um, the angels that are connected to that realm. And so instead of trying to deal with all the curses, we start partnering with the blessing in it and the curse is good. <laughs> displaced, you know, and yeah. I mean, there's so many passages I could, you know, list many, but I'll just list a couple um, where it talks about how, um, you know, in Isaiah 55, it talks about how the, how the trees will clap and the land will produce certain things, you know, um, when the word of God goes forth. And so there is a partnership that even, the land, if the trees are clapping, they're cheering you on. Like the land creation is cheering us on as the cloud of witness is cheering us on. Yeah. And so we can partner with the design of creation. And part of the um, the expression of the reign of God is going to be in that space. So um, another example is that in, um, I think it's in Revelation, and I cannot remember the reference, but when the woman is being persecuted it's and the dragon sends the rivers you know of water that are supposed to swallow her up um the earth fought for the woman that's what the scripture says the earth opened up and um, swallowed up what the dragon was releasing so mm. even um creation wants to partner um with us and so i feel that part of the shift into the new wineskin for the apostolic is understanding how to partner with creation and the forces of uh, the universe, you know, whatever those things are. So it's not just the land, but, you know, certain dimensions, um, graces that a land has um, to bring forth things. So I think that when you are opening gateways and understanding regional graces and that kind of thing, um, it's not just the people sitting on the land, but it's also the land. There needs to be a resonance between the two. And sometimes um, there isn't a resonance. Sometimes um, 
you know, there are things that are happening, people that are in that land that don't belong there, you know, that are polluting the land. And so um, anyways, there's so much to that conversation, but I think that in and of itself, part of, you know, the assignment is understanding that the gateways that we're wanting to see, where we're wanting to see the glory pour out yeah. through are connected to creation as much as to heavenly dimensions, as much as to our assignment and as much as to the prophetic word. Yeah. I don't know if I answered your question, but I hope I did. Well, you, yeah, you definitely uh, talked about a lot of the the topics that I was referring to that you, I mean, when you were drawing on this uh, whiteboard and you kind of drew this dome mm -hmm. over the land and then, you know, Oh yeah. The, okay. The opened up. I know and, what yeah, you're yeah. talking about. I remember now. So, <clears throat> we're we were talking about Psalms 24. Yes. And you know yep. the lifting up of the head. You know, lift up yeah. your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Um, what does that look like in the natural? You know, what does that look like in an in in a practical process? Um, does it look like us having meetings and going to sp specific gateways and releasing a decree? And I'm not I'm not dismissing decrees. Decrees right. are very powerful. Um, but what I am saying is that there's so much more to that process. When, when you lift up a, uh, that, when you speak to a gateway to lift up its head, you're speaking about the consciousness, the, the thought process of that particular gateway, whether it's the people, whether it's even just creation, wh whatever that trending thought process, you know, you want the right one. So the divine consciousness, and I know that some people probably are uncomfortable with that word, but what I mean by that is that in um, Ephesians 4.23, it says that to be renewed in the spirit of the mind. So yep. the spirit of the mind is, you know, what other people would call consciousness. Yep. And um, so when we are dealing with gateways, we have to understand that there is a realm of consciousness that is involved in the governance. So that's why God calls us to renew to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Yeah. And so um, so that we can, as a people, begin to lift the um, the bar of the thought, the psyche of heaven in that particular region. And yeah. then the gateway begins to be drawn into attention. And at that point, when that level of governance is released um, and, you know, the gateways will begin to open you know, and there, in, in, in the glory will begin to cut, pour through that particular gateway. Yeah. That the King of glory mm -hmm. may come in. Right. Like, I love that. Um, you know, there was something very interesting because I guess I had never thought, I mean, honestly, I, uh, had thought about all the other aspects of redemption, uh, mm -hmm. when, you know, there is an apostolic sending when God sends a people, a person, a group, whatever, in a, in a region um, apostolically, obviously, you know, culture in and of itself, as as in the way people live, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a redemption that happens within that, uh, with the way people think. Because, you know, I guess the way I've always, you know, understood it and, and the way that I explain it, uh, sometimes when I'm talking about this, um, is when you know we there's principalities obviously the bible talks about we don't battle against flesh and blood mm -hmm. but against principalities powers rulers of spiritual wickedness in heavenly places and so you know our battle isn't against people mm -hmm. uh we have a battle against principalities and and people I, I there's always been this confusion about well well then what do we do How, let's get them things down let's pull them down you know mm -hmm. and, and yeah uh, but if it was that easy, uh, then, you know, if, if, if all it took was, was one believer jumping up on a chair and, and yelling at that thing in Jesus name to come down, we would have no more principalities because we have billions of Christians that things would have been pulled down a long time ago, but, but no, obviously it, there's something else that needs to happen and principalities rule uh, through agreement, uh, when you have mm -hmm. enough people in a region believing wrong principles, principalities get you know that power through agreement, just like any other mm -hmm. demonic 
you know, situation. <laughs> and uh, so, for example, a, a principality of poverty, you have all these people bound by wrong mindsets, believing wrong principles about I'm never going to have this. I'm always going to be this way. And so they've entered into agreement and that principality has power. But when you get enough renewed minds, so when the apostolic is sent in, and starts to pull down, tear down, destroy those wrong mindsets, those wrong principles people believe, and they begin to be transformed by the renewing of their mind, then all of a sudden, all this agreement starts getting broke. It's almost like I see these strings going from people's minds to the principality, and all of a sudden, these strings start getting cut all over the place. Mm -hmm. And as a collected consciousness of renewed minds is what I call it. I know that people, mm -hmm. they think that's a new age word, but the reality is, it's just like you said, the spirit of the mind. It's mm -hmm. you have enough people with renewed minds gathered together. It's like it creates this bubble of heaven that literally just pushes the principality out of power. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I just all that all that new language that um, that I used in that uh, description um, well, a lot of it was inspired by that meeting I came to with you, but I, but the reason I was so excited about it wasn't just because of the new language. I literally had a supernatural encounter after I left that, that mm -hmm. meeting that night. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may not know, but I went to Bible school in Waxahachie, right? And um, my entire teenage years, I was on drugs. And for a short period of time, I mean, heavy drugs like heroin and meth and coke and all that. And, and for a short period of time, I got right with the Lord. I grew up in church, so, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I knew God. But I got right with the Lord to stop doing drugs. And I went down to Texas to go to Bible school. Well, I hadn't really been off drugs that long, but I, I felt confident. There were a lot of things still in me that, that the Lord needed to heal. And so I went through a year of Bible school and then I stayed summer break and I got involved. I got back involved with hanging around with the wrong people. I began to do drugs again. And so there was a lot of woundedness that happened down there. Not only with the school kicked me out, like all these things. And I just had all this woundedness in that area that was attached to that area mm -hmm. specifically. And the night after I left the meeting, I thought, well, no, I was already heading back because my wife was down there. We were going to a conference for her health coaching business. I was already, I was halfway back to the hotel and Holy Spirit said, I want you to turn around and go drive through the campus of Southwestern, which is a school I went to. And I was like, why? I've been by there numerous times, you know, and I just couldn't shake it. So I turned around, I drove all the way back and I felt like there was specific places the Lord wanted me to walk. And this is all like, what? Okay. I, I've just, I guess at this point I've learned, I've been around the, 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 the glory supernatural realm enough to know like, it, oh, well, if it doesn't make sense, something better is probably going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. so something, you know, supernatural is probably going to happen. So I went to those spots. I walked up the steps. I went to the old chapel. I went to where my dorm used to be. And, and I walked through these spots. And I'm telling you what, I got back in my car. I could barely drive. I had so much heavy glory mm -hmm. falling. And I hadn't prayed. I hadn't asked the Lord for anything. Mm -hmm. I would just follow the Holy Spirit. And, and the interesting thing is, is you had just got done explaining how the, the, the land can be healed, the redemption in the land, the, the, the symbiotic relationship, this ecosystem of heaven where the, the two aren't separate. They are connected mm -hmm. in ways. And I by, by going to specific spots on the land, I began to, to experience supernatural transforma transformation. Mm -hmm. um, and I could feel it in my mind. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. I was like feeling this heavy glory in my mind. I'd never felt that before. I felt a lot of glory. That was so different. Mm -hmm. And I just, the whole drive back to uh, the hotel, it was just these waves and waves and waves of supernatural glory just kept hitting me. And, you know, I downloaded it all to my wife when I got back and she was blown away. But it, it it's just another dimension of transformation, renewal, redemption that I had never considered. Um, even though I've had different encounters that were tied to specific spots uh, on the land, um, I guess I had never really thought about it that deeply. Um, that there is a connect. Anything you want to kind of add to that or, or something? Yeah. That, yeah. Um, in Ephesians um, one, so let me turn there really quickly um, on my phone. <laughs> um, Ephesians one, I don't know why it's acting up. Verse ten um, says this. <clears throat> Let's see here. 
with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth in him. So um, I believe that the new thing that the Lord is wanting to release is, is this ecosystem, this administration mm. that um, understands that in Christ, all things in heaven and all things in earth can be summed up. And that includes the heavenly dimensions or the spiritual dimensions that we would, you know, call like principalities and powers and um, world forces and then spiritual forces. And um, and then, you know, like we we forget that those realms are very real and we only really have a grid for principalities at the most, um, you know, and we sort of, you know, haven't really understood how those other realms operate. But yeah. a lot of those those dimensions are, are forces that um, can be um, exemplified in creation. So part of like, for instance, like the electromagnetic force or gravity or um, strong or weak force, those, those things are part of those realms, but we just haven't understood how creation is embedded in all of those dimensions. So yeah. we think of creation just as land, but it's actually everything in the land that magnetizes the destiny in the land into being. So um, understanding the, your angelic canopy and the spiritual forces of heaven um, that God wants to release through your life, through your assignment to um, to go against what or displays those other spiritual forces of wickedness and, you know, the world forces of the present darkness and then, you know, the 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 principalities and the powers that are connected to all that. Um, when we begin to move with um, the thought process of heaven um, and in, in a renewed mind, mean, including the heart, we begin to be um, agents um, and it's not just of of just our words trying to displace things, but who we are begins to to shift and begins to become a vessel for all those other things that heaven wants to release to begin to find a landing strip. So, um, you know, thought processes, you know, how how we think um, is are so important, but even just how we respond to things um, it's you know, we just need a greater grid in understanding our actual yeah. um the actual realm that God has given us, the realm of authority, because we understand dunamis, but we don't really have a grid for Kratos, which is what it's the power that resurrected Jesus from the dead. It's a domain like Peter had where his shadow healed the sick. Yes. It's a yeah. it's a realm where the reign of God is exemplified and demonstrated. And it's not just that that spur of miracles that dunamis will release, you know, to take, um, to begin to open up realms, right? So um, so when we understand that there is a domain that God wants us to carry um, yeah. and that yeah. this domain is meant to be a dwelling place, we will shift from looking at, and this is something that I'm teaching my, the people that are in the singularity group, that we have to shift from thinking of our assignment as this like Christian or uh, church thing and, and, and shift more into an understanding of an economy because Paul understood divine economy and he understood his assignment as an economy. Um, I mean, the word that is used in Ephesians 1, 10, that word administration, um, other, um, other uh, you know, versions will translate it as dispensation. It's actually the word oikonomia, which means economy, which basically, if you break it down, it means house and the law of the house that administrates. Mm. So it's the Good. the 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 authority that administrates it. So what law is um, alive in your ministry? Is it the law of life or is it the law of death? Because out of that law, that economy is going to be ad administrated from. Mm. And we don't understand. Um, you know, we think of economy as like a bartering system, but divine economy is actually understanding of a household, a stewardship that God gives you and the, the law of the spirit of life that is meant to administrate that household. So, you yeah. know, when, um, 
in Acts, when the apostles talk about how um, there was no lack, that great grace was upon them all, it was because of the economy that they administrated. Yeah. You know, so. That, that is so good. Um, <laughs> there's so much, so many things we could talk about when it comes to this. Um, go ahead and, and like and share this broadcast. I really want to get this conversation happening in as many circles as possible. Um, if you would, you know, I was talking about uh, shifting atmospheres and, and um, shifting the spiritual atmospheres and the culture and regions. And the Lord brought me to Isaiah 26. And um, when you're thinking about some of the things that we've just talked about, you read certain scriptures totally different, right? Like, <laughs> like you go, you'll blast right by stuff. But then when the Lord gives you a revelation on something new, it just, you read something totally different after that. And um, Isaiah 26 says, we have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks around the city, right? Open the gates mm -hmm. that the righteous nation, which keeps the truth may enter in. He will keep you in perfect peace. Now that's Shalom. Mm -hmm. which means complete wholeness, mind, body, spirit, right? So he'll keep you in complete wholeness, mind, body, spirit, whose eyes are stayed on you because he trusts in you, trust in the Lord forever. And then he says, he brings down those who dwell on high, the lofty city, he lays it low. Now, what's interesting, everyone, mm -hmm. everyone uh, is so focused now on the lofty city, like the, the, the part of culture that we're wanting to change that people don't like, why is this happening in our culture? Or this has got to change. This is so evil. It's going this terrible direction. And Oh no, you know, and um, which I'm not, you know, discounting some of the things like, obviously, yeah, there's wickedness in our world and, and there's, there's wickedness in our culture and, and definitely there needs to be redemption um, happening in many areas of our culture. But when I was looking up this uh, in, in the Hebrew, What's interesting is that the first thing I thought was, I wonder if it's the same word in the Hebrew where it says strong city and then lofty city, which lofty is basically prideful, arrogant, mm -hmm. you know, the wicked. Um, <laughs> and they're not, they're not the same word. So the first word, we have a strong city, that word city, uh, it literally means to be awakened. Mm -hmm. It means like an awakening, mm -hmm. uh, stirred up. It means people that have been stirred up and awakened into the truth. And the word lofty city is just a normal word for a town or a city, mm -hmm. right? And so literally it's saying that we have this city, this region where people have been affected by the redemption of heaven and we have been awakened. We have been stirred up spiritually. And because we have experienced redemption, now the land has been redeemed and walls and bulwarks of salvation have surrounded mm -hmm. the city. And it's just like, oh my gosh, like this is how this works. Uh, you know, the, the, the apostolic comes in, whatever word you want to use for it, uh, People begin to get redeemed. Their minds just begin to get redeemed. The land begins to get redeemed. And then there's these bulwarks that begin to rise up, just like the walls, you know, around <laughs> Jerusalem where Nehemiah had to go and rebuild the walls. Now these spiritual walls are being rebuilt around cities of redemption and salvation where anything that goes in and out of that city has to go through those walls, has to be affected and impacted mm -hmm. by that salvation. And salvation doesn't just mean um, I said a prayer and got saved. No, salvation is everything's being impacted by that salvation. Mm -hmm. Everything is being redeemed. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah, no, it's so true. And, you know, I, I did a deep study in that word for city because I, one of my assignments is to build cities. Mm, and yeah. um, I think that some of the ways that we will see the greatest demonstration of the new wineskin will be through city building. And I'm not talking about Christian havens, you know, to like uh, <laughs> run away from heritage you know. USA. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about cities that the lost are going to want to come live in. You know, the people who are in darkness are going to want to come live in. And yeah. Um, and that word, actually, if you go back to the root, it's, it's awakening, it's light. Yeah. It's light itself. Yep. And, um, which is a, 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 the greater reality, you know, 
um, when we begin to shift the, the unseen into the scene. And, um, and then we begin to build out of the pattern that, um, that we have experienced in God, in God because the son does only what the father is doing. Um, you know, and so like what exists in heaven is the reality that, um, and the pattern that you will bring, um, into the earth because you're living out of that reality. So I think that, you know, when we're talking about, um, architecting culture or engineering culture, it's so important, you know, there's, there's two dimensions, um, to this and, and there's place for both. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a side that is reformational that is called to bring reformation to a system or a structure. Um, and usually reformation is all about bringing something but back to its original design. Or you yeah. can do it as a futurist and actually not even worry about that old structure. But you bring a new structure in that actually makes the old structure obsolete. Yeah. And in that space is where we will, I feel, will have the greatest impact. So when we're thinking about or thinking about, for instance, the scope of mountains and the seven mountain um, paradigm, it's important to understand that um, reformation is important. But maybe the better question that we need to be asking the Lord is what are the new systems and the new mountains that you want to bring into being that are going to um, that are going to bring greatest change? Um, because in, in Isaiah 2, it says that, that the nations will stream to the mountain of the Lord yep. and all will be taught of God. It's talking about a realm of consciousness that yeah. is, God is so present that you you can't help but receive downloads from heaven. You know, you can't help but um, experience the thoughts of God um, and become transformed. So it's the nations and the kings, you know, coming and gathering around the light of God, but that light um, is expressed, you know, through, um, you know, when you think of a city, it's yeah. um, what makes a city a city is that it's, it has to have an economy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not a city. But yeah. again, it, like we have to shift our mindset of what we think earthly economies are and what divine economies really entail. Um, and cities are about communication. They're about, um, you know, streets and and commerce and, and exchange and language is a huge part of that. So yeah. the awakening um, should be creating and producing all of those avenues so that the infrastructure of that, um, that new vision, that new awakening can have a, a form on the earth. Yeah. You know, um, I love, I love what we're talking about here because again, when I say I, I believe the apostolic needs a language upgrade, I, I really think that just a, our discussions about the apostolic, the way we teach, the way that we even go about implementing the apostolic, I think all needs an upgrade. Because here's the thing we can, like you said, we can go in and we can be like, okay, we need to go after these wrong mindsets. We need to go after these wrong things. And we can spend months and months and months and months just doing that. Um, or, we can go in and we can begin to build the right mindsets and we can begin to focus on what God wants us to build the, the new thing that he wants to do us to do in that city. Uh, because, you know, reformation can happen in a lot of different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Reformation can come by pointing out all the bad and mm -hmm. going one by one and working on and, and trying to, you know, bring people into a new understanding, but reformation can also happen as we bring in the new system and structure. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, like you said, makes the old obsolete or pushes it out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that Isaiah 26 literally describes that. If you're thinking about it from that mm -hmm. mindset, I think it'd be real easy to just brush by this again. Um, but when we're talking about that, you know, we have a strong city, uh, but the awakened city, city that has been, had light brought in and been awakened, right? Uh, basically have been revived. Um, God will appoint redemption and salvation for walls and bul bulwarks, open the gates. So the gates open up that the righteous people with truth enter in. And then he says, you will keep him in perfect peace. Now, if you just think peace, you think, oh, they're going to be nice and calm. Mm -hmm. but that's not that word. It's shalom. It means complete wholeness, mind, 
body, mm-hmm. spirit. So health, healing, uh, lack of sickness and disease, lack of mental problems, mm-hmm. right? Um, lack of wrong mindsets. He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him, not stayed on all the stuff that's wrong, not stayed on all the wrong systems and structures, not all the wrong mindsets, but whose mind is stayed on him because his mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And then it says right after that, he will lay low the lofty city. Mm -hmm. So if our mind is stayed on him, he brings us into perfect wholeness. And because of that, the lofty is laid low Mm -hmm. automatically. You don't have to work all hard at getting it to be late. That's that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally agree. And I think that um, when you are, you know, um, I think that we need to be so bold in like believing, not just believing for things, but asking you know, letting God give us things that we hadn't even considered. You know, we, we, for instance, um, all these prophetic words about the, you know, a, a new prophetic movement and a, and, a, and a new sound being released. I mean, those words have been swirling for like, let's say probably 20, 30 years at the least. Right. And we're, we're expecting the word to come in this particular way. And apostolically, we're trying to go into regions and like create these spaces and, and going in with wineskins of, you know, houses of prayer or, or things like that. And I'm not saying there isn't room for that. I'm just saying that right. have we asked ourselves, is there another expression for this that is for the world to experience and not necessarily just the church? And so I think that, you know, for in my case, like I felt my main assignment as, you know, my apostolic assignment um, and I don't even like to call it that because I feel yeah, that I I'm operating more out of a kingly priestly mantle um, in that identity rather than the apostolic um, in my case. But essentially, you know, I could fall under the apostolic because I am building things. But totally. Um, and I believe you were specifically sent to that region to do that, too. So yes. No, consider absolutely. It apostolic. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, when we are. Um, looking at um, a the expression that God wants to bring into the earth and God wants to architect. I had to, my, so what I was going to say, my assignment, my apostolic assignment is to build the next hundred years. So I have to create a models to give a grid for what is possible in the next hundred years. And it may take a hundred years to build, yeah. should the Lord tarry. Um, and that's a really big vision. That's a really big assignment. And within that, you know, it's all these other stuff that I have to build. But how do you even approach a paradigm of 100 years? And like, what what do we what are we looking for? Like, what model do I need to do to be able to do that? And um, one of the main assignments within that 100 year paradigm is to bring new language into being. And um, and I was doing that, you know, and I was working on that. And I felt like I was like you know, language and thought process are so interlaced. Um, You can't have new language without a new thought process. And you can't have a new thought process without new language, because sometimes people need to hear the new language in order to trigger that new thought. Right. Um, So it's like this, you know, like interlaced thing. So I was sort of in this place of like, what, what do I do, Lord? Do I, do I focus on language or do I focus on on, on just re- the renewal of the mind. And I felt like the Holy Spirit told me, he said, what you need is a model for a new mind. And I just sort of sat there because, you know, we have all these <laughs> conversations about the future and, and artificial intelligence and all the pitfalls of that. And, um, and the Lord was saying, you need to create a model for a new mind that um, is a model for a mind that is... Um, an expression or a gateway um, of wonder you need to. So I, out of all the revelation that I had, I had to use that revelation to build a model of like what a new mind in God would look like um, and begin to introduce people to the awe and wonder of God as a mind paradigm rather than just as an experience paradigm. You see what I'm saying? Like I had to shift like, I may I had to do a major overhaul from okay I just have to you know release the you know the sound of heaven and people will be transformed 
to this other place where I really had to partner with my understanding of the patterns of heaven and the design of, 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 of the, the new mind to be able to create this gateway. And, um, and so in that place, I started understanding that all these words about worship and, 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 you know, experiences of worship, I mean, those things are going to happen, but really what worship is, is a gateway of awe and wonder. But I had never framed it that way before. God had to take me through a whole process for me to be able to see that. And I was in this religious confine of, well, you know, we just need a worship experience where God was saying, well, what if you built a framework for people to experience the thoughts of worship, but they don't even know they're experiencing, you know, when they see something beautiful and they experience that awe or that wonder, they, they are worshiping. They may not know what, you know, if they are in darkness, but um, so as, as the apostolic begins to get those blueprints, it's so important to frame to the new rather than that old understanding, because I could have very easily tried to have like 10,000, you know, worship meetings, um, you know, <laughs> and try to create an atmosphere. And I'm not saying that that doesn't create an atmosphere. I'm saying that there, we need to expand because the grace that the Lord is releasing right now is so much more than yep. just gatherings. It's really an architectural yep. and design anointing to be able to um, architect culture. So if I can architect a mind, I can design a mind, then I can um, I can use it as a gateway to let what I need to let in from the Lord and what needs to stay out to stay out. You know, so it creates a guardrail for um, heaven to begin to what I call a governance for heaven to be a canopy for heaven to begin to move. And out of that space, you begin to have <clears throat> renewal and healing that you never had conceived before. You know, that yeah. um, that is so on just on a whole other level. Um, and it's not just it's like the mind and the emotion. So it's mind and heart. And um, so all of that to say that we really have to expand and ask some questions that we haven't dared to ask before, because it's going to look so much more differently than what we had thought it was going to. Yeah. Well, and you know, I've heard, you know, multiple people say this phrase, like we're, you know, leaving the church era and entering the kingdom era, you mm -hmm. know, and I think that phrase in and of itself, uh, you could say a lot of things about it, but um, I think for quite a while, the church has been so focused on building in the physical. And I'm not saying we don't need buildings. We need buildings. We, mm -hmm. we need a place for people to gather, of course. I mean, homes only work until you get, you know, about 15 or 20 people. And then it's like the bathroom, you need more bathrooms or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. But uh, so, you know, we're always going to need places, physical locations. But I think for so long, the church has just been so focused on that, that it hasn't focused a whole lot on the other aspect. You know what I mean? Like engineering the mind and things in the spirit and the, the, the we, we've been engineering the things in the physical great if, to, to expand the kingdom. Um, but, you know, when I was thinking about while you were talking about that, I'm like, well, you know, this is what the disciples had to figure out because see, when Jesus told them, now you're my apostles, they were like, oh, well, we know what apostles are. There's those guys in Jerusalem that keep trying to get us to change all of our customs, to change the way we worship, to change the way we live life, to change the way we do this, that, this, that, you know, uh, because they were wanting to shift it into a Roman culture. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the Romans were great at coming in and physically creating another little Rome wherever mm -hmm. they went. They would build their schools and build, you know, things the way Romans build them, their bridges, the aqueducts, all the things. And, and then they would work on getting people to think differently. Um, but a lot of it did have to do with changing the physical. And then the thought processes will come later because everything around them looks like Rome. Right. Mm -hmm. But but the disciples really had to go into a new region and figure out how to do that here. And mm -hmm. in the spirit, like that's what they had to figure out. That's the only thing Like they couldn't go and build mega churches because they were in regions where, where Rome was like had it on lockdown. So they kind of had to be in incognito and, you know, um, really had to focus on transferring apostolic truths into the, the mental transformation mm -hmm. uh, and in the spiritual realm. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. 
So there was something else um, that I wanted to bring up. You were talking about um, just how the land partners. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I can remember the first time that I had a very life-changing encounter with a very specific location. And I, I can remember thinking, well, I can't tell anybody about this. They're all going to think I'm into some crazy, you know what I mean? Uh, just because people, I, I don't know. I think for so long, uh, people have been so, again, focused on the things that are wrong, like the occult and the new age, right? That anytime we bring up something that um, the new age has focused on or has talked about, all of a sudden, oh, we can't. But the reality is nothing is original, like nothing that the occult does is original, nothing that witchcraft or anything like that. It's all taking what God has already created, mm -hmm. and distorting and manipulating. And so like the earth is the Lord's and their fullness thereof, like everything God created, but not just in the physical realm that we can see in the forces, the, mm -hmm. the, the things that we can't see. Um, that's God created all of that. Right. And mm -hmm. so. I had an encounter one time that involved like the magnetic forces in the earth. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can maybe tell my wife and my best friend, you know what I mean? Like they're <laughs> going to think, but I didn't go into this area like, oh, I'm going to harness these for No, no, no. I just was following the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right. And we were driving up this mountain in Northern California. We were at Bethel uh, for the week and we're driving up Mount Shasta and there are a lot of people, new age people that go to that mountain for a lot mm -hmm. of different reasons. Um, but we were driving up the mountain and then there was a girl in, in the vehicle, her and her husband were with us. And she's like, Hey, did you feel that? Stop the car. I'm like, okay. And I stopped the car and she's like, really, did you feel that? I'm like, no, I didn't feel that. She's like, back up. So I backed up the car and man, let me tell you about, I don't know, 20, 30 feet back. It was all of a sudden, boom. I mean, I know what the glory feels like. I get these, these little mm -hmm. muscles up here that tense. like I, I could feel it in my muscles. I could just, I, I'm just very, you know, familiar with mm -hmm. the glory and with, with the manifest presence of God. And it was strong. And I was like, wow. So I pulled over and um, long story short, she was like, I feel like we're supposed to take off our shoes. We're on holy ground, you know? Well, I had this encounter with the Lord that to this day, I've never experienced anything like it. Um, I, I got filled with this electricity, but at the same time, it felt like there was this magnetic force that was kind of just coming in and out. I mean, it's very hard to explain, but here's what happened. And here's how you really can't argue with it. When I talk about the fruit, uh, there were things in my life I've been praying about for years. You know, there's things sometimes about our personalities or just the way that we respond to things. And then later you think, oh man, why did I respond that way? Or why mm -hmm. did I act that way? Or why did I, why did that bother me? You know, there's just certain things I was praying, God, would you help me with that? Would you, would you change that? Help me to change that, you know? And for years and years and years, I just wasn't seeing really any change in those areas. And when that power hit me, literally, it was like, I mean, I've done construction my whole life. I know what it's like to grab 220 volts. Uh, I know what it's like to grab even more than that. You're not supposed to live through it, but I have. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, there's a certain feeling when that electricity, high voltage goes through your body. It's mm -hmm. the only thing I can compare it to. It felt exactly the same, except it didn't hurt. I just felt mm -hmm. the surge of electricity. And um, that continued for 40 days. I went back to Michigan, wow. I could barely sleep uh, for 40 days. And um, I would get these little jolts. And I'm not someone that really manifests like, you know, people that, just they mm -hmm. shake a lot or whatever. I just don't do that. Mm -hmm. But um, but I but during that time I couldn't control it. Like when it would hit me, my arm would jump. I'd knock my cup over at a restaurant. My wife's like, "What are you? Are you getting shocked again?" You know, it's like yeah, I can't can't help it. But those things that I had been praying about, God rewired my brain through that current that was going through me for forty days, and it changed my life forever. I've never been never dealt with those things ever again. The fruit was the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. came out of that and so there was a connection to this it did it didn't happen 20 feet up or 20 feet back it happened at a very specific location on the land and the, I, I said god i need you to show me in in, in the bible somewhere mm -hmm. like show me where, where this happened because i just don't i don't understand um because we just have this this framework of everything has to be in the spirit like there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing that it's 
nothing about the land. That's that's that weird people or that's the new agers or whatever. But the Lord was like, Moses, read about Moses. And I'm like, well, I know about Moses. I've read it a hundred times. But you go back and, and, and I read through it. So he was taking his sheep. And if you've been to Israel, you see these Bedouins out there. They've got these paths that they follow. All the Bedouins, they follow the same path. And so Moses is on this path that he's following with his sheep. And he sees the burning bush. He didn't have an encounter when he saw it. He didn't hear any voice when he saw it. But the Bible says when he turned aside and went over to that location, there was a specific location on the land. And then God said, take your shoes off. It's holy ground. Mm -hmm. And then the encounter came and then everything happened. Um, and so I was like, okay, I guess that is, you know, that is biblical. I don't, I don't understand everything about it, but, um, but, but I think we have to get to a place where as believers and, and we're, people that are trying to operate in this new era and really trying to see the kingdom come, his kingdom come as will be done, creating these greenhouses of heaven where regions are literally a place where heaven can invade earth and where the things of heaven can be manifest. Um, have to realize that we have to expand our understanding, expand our expectations of what God can do and what he can do it through. Mm -hmm. And I believe there is a strong tie with the land you know the earth is the lord's the fullness thereof and if you know if there was a specific place that moses went on the land where it was holy ground you know what i mean and there's there's more to this than i think we've seen or understood as mm -hmm. no absolutely and i think that understanding is coming but you know we have to come out of that fear base and um look at the fruit you know and um, and as we do that, I think that the Lord will honor our step of faith and give us a greater grid. But I mean, I, I believe that, you know, there are realms of the angelic that are within creation, within certain forces of the universe. They're they are within. And, and whenever those things begin to be set free, those angelic dimensions will begin to unlock. And, um, you know, I mean, there's so many passages of angels connected to creation, you know, the angels in, um, there's several kind of in, um, in revelation, you know, one you know, one foot on the land, one foot on the sea and mm. his head was like the sun. And it was like, you know, we think that it was just like sitting on something, but it was, it's, it's, tr God is trying to express through those passages, the domain of the angelic and how, intertwined it was to land sea and the cosmic realm um but we don't we don't see it in this way we see it in this very you know one dimensional thing like this angel came out of heaven and sat on the land and on the sea and it just happened to be yeah. that way you know All right but um but yeah i think that there are angelic and uh, encounters waiting to happen that are part of the realm of creation and as we um as stewards of of the promises of god and the words of god um, we're going to begin to um, collide with those things because as part of our assignment, as part of what God wants to bring um, into the earth, we just need to, um, you know, I pray that people will, will receive a greater love for creation, not necessarily this like weird thing, you know, like tree huggers or, or anything like that, but real, like a real love and a cherishing um, just uh, heart towards what God created and designed and and wanting to see the fullness of that design um, be released to express, um, you know, what God is wanting to to bring and, and uh, you know, reveal his glory through those dimensions as well. You know, I was also thinking about it when, when you were talking about there being this symbiotic connection between the people and the land and this whole, you know, canopy of heaven and this whole, you know, uh, greenhouse of heaven or whatever that's over a region. Um, I, I was thinking about in the garden when uh, Adam and Eve sinned, right? God said what? He, he said, cursed is the ground for your sake. Right. And it's like the moment that sin entered, it's like the land, everything was connected, was blessed. Everything was operating in the principles of heaven. Uh, and then 
sin came in, brokenness came in, and that transferred right into the land, you know, mm -hmm. and um, cursed is the land for your sake, thorns and thistles it will now produce. And um, I just think there's so much there that we don't understand yet. I mean, you might understand a little bit more than I do at this point. I think you've had some pretty powerful encounters with the Lord where, where you know, he's shown you some things in this area, but I, I do, I think there's, there's so much more. And just those few experiences that I've had prove to me, like, I may not understand it all, but man, I have been transformed by the Holy spirit, by the spirit of God in specific geographical locations that, that these things only happened when I was mm -hmm. right there not mm -hmm. when i was a, a 10 mile down the road not when i was 20 feet over the, but right there just like when i went back to, to southwestern i drove in i was on the property i even walked through none of it happened and the lord said i want you to walk right over there and so i walked mm -hmm. right over there and then bam i got hit with the glory and so it's like i can't explain that but all i know is there's something to it and there's and i even believe like look i've been back there numerous times um but I think that's part of the, the reason that you were sent there, that you were sent to that region was to bring redemption to that region and to the land. Um, and, and, you know, I've been to Southwestern before and that didn't happen before, mm -hmm. you know, and so I believe there is, there is definitely this symbiotic connection um, between uh, the people that are sent, um, the work that God is doing through them mm -hmm. and the land. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, Part of my process was in understanding the destiny of this of the land. Um, you know, initially it was like, okay, you know, this is where this big physics machine was supposed to be. You know, um, the Hadron Collider, Collider, and it's all yeah. about acceleration and the quantum and all of that, which is what I carry. So, it, it, you know, yeah. that wasn't like difficult to understand. But the process of really understanding the mechanics of um, and even the governance of the destiny of the land. Okay, so if we are talking about, you know, creation be, being set free, um, and and we pray, you know, Romans eight, you know, that well, you know, understanding that creation is groaning for the manifest sons of God, you know, yeah. and to be set free in the glory of the children of God. So when we are aware of that, and we're like, well, Lord, I want to see creation set free. We sometimes just stop there and think of creation as this like overarching word, or maybe we think of it more specifically as like water or land or maybe the stars, who knows, you know, whatever concept um, is in people's minds. But the process of the Lord took me in was that I had to really define um, the realm that I wanted to, that I was called, like I had to have an understanding of the realm that I was called to bring freedom into so it wasn't just creation. I had to go through a process where the Lord is like, you have to start with the electromagnetic force mm -hmm. because that's the realm that has locked language and nations. Um, mm -hmm. So in Isaiah 45, where it talks about the, the iron bars and the, and the bronze doors, it's talking about the electromagnetic force. You know, iron being um, the magnetic and bronze being the electric. And so it's a it's a force dimension. It's a realm of creation that uh, when it is fully released, um, it's going to be able to produce light that is beyond um, what we call ultraviolet, ultraviolet, you know, or even you know below that, um, like the low frequency stuff. Um, so, but you know, I didn't have a grid for all that at the very beginning. But the way that I pray into how I need to do things is that it's that realm of that force. Now, when you look at the science of it and that realm of the electromagnetic force, which is, you know, throughout the whole, not just the earth, but the whole universe. Yeah. Also um, in the realm of consciousness. Now they have done numerous studies, like not new age studies, but scientific studies where they measure um, people's thoughts and emotions and they and it it creates an electromagnetic field so yep. even the electromagnetic force is you know exhibited through our consciousness how we think about things and all of that so when god is is saying I, you know you're called to bring freedom into this dimension inevitably you're going to bring freedom freedom into the realm of 
consciousness because it's the same force operating through. So um, I had to go through a process of really defining like what is this region first supposed to see freedom in? And, you know, it was the electromagnetic force. And it may be the same model for a lot of regions. Like, what does that force look like in your region? Or maybe it's a different expression of that, of a, a force of the universe or a force that maybe science doesn't even know exists, you know? And that's what you're called to bring into what we call the supernatural and all of that. So um, we just have to learn to shift our mind and our lenses in a way that we can begin to see things differently so that we can begin to frame things differently. Yeah, you know, I think, again, it's expanding our understanding and expectation of what God can really do, because I think people think, okay, everything I see, that's the physical. And everything I don't see, it's spiritual. But the reality mm -hmm. is, there's all kinds of things we don't see that I wouldn't consider spiritual. There's mm -hmm. you know, the quantum realm. There's all kinds of things happening. They're just so small, we can't see them i mean and i know that you you've talked about you know string theory and there being a greater theory or whatever but the string theory i've always loved because when i hear you know the scriptures that say uh that everything in the universe is held together by the spoken word of god i'm like well there's string theory you know <laughs> holding the word of god holding yeah. everything together the resonance of his voice but um I, I when i think about also like tesla you know he had all these crazy uh, designs and um inventions and it, correct me if i'm wrong you probably know more about it than i do but didn't he invent this way of uh transmitting electricity like wirelessly through the mm -hmm. air didn't he like transmit it through the earth like from one end to the earth to the other at some point yeah he harnessed the um the electromagnetic like just the atmosphere and then like from and then the energy from the earth he knew how to how to you know make it work and, and so it. those are some of the forces that we're talking about the forces of creation mm -hmm. um and again some would say well if i can't see it, it's spiritual but that that electricity is definitely not spiritual i mean it was it's part of the physical creation the forces in this physical creation that god set up he mm -hmm. set up all these things and i find it very interesting where you hear these great revivalists of old talk about getting shocked with electricity feeling mm -hmm. this electricity i think even finney talked about you know um feeling the lightnings of god or, or whatever and it's like man there's something there that we don't fully mm -hmm. understand yet but if we're willing if we're willing to open ourselves up to however god wants to do things whatever he wants to do we begin to experience some of these things mm -hmm. and um yeah i i do i believe that we are entering into a time where the only explanation we're going to have is no eye is seen, no ear is heard, no mind can conceive, <laughs> you know, show it to me in the Bible. Well, I can show you some principles, but, you know, Jesus did say that we would do greater things. Mm -hmm. We would do the same, but we would also do greater. And the whole no eye is seen, no ear is heard, no mind can conceive. Um, I do. I believe we're entering into a time where, yes, we want to see revival spread across the, the entire earth. But what does that look like? You know, um, the last time we had a set of meetings here uh, at our church where, I mean, it was the heaviest glory that, that I had ever experienced in this uh, this place. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember, uh, I, I, I I've never said this online before, but I'm already going that way, so I might as well. So I've got this deer mount in my, my uh, office. Mm -hmm. where I built it for my dad. He had these two antlers that were like in the basement forever because my mom didn't, didn't want deer heads in her house. But my dad always wanted to get them mounted. And so I'm like, for Father's Day, I'm going to mount these two deer. So me and my son went out and harvested a couple bucks. We took the, you know, the, the capes and they, they mounted these antlers on a full, you know, shoulder mount, whatever, these two deer. And I built this pedestal for the corner. Um, and I used this big tree limb that I'd cut mm -hmm. off, left in my garage for a month to dry. And then I mounted it for another month. I was working on it. So it was like two month old tree limb. Mm -hmm. And I had it in the corner of my office. Um, I don't know. I might be able to, yeah, it's <laughs> over there. It's in the yeah. corner. Yeah. It's got, it's got these, uh, you know, this dead tree limb on it. And the, one of the last few days of these meetings that we had is heavy glory, just 
crazy. And the supernatural stuff was popping off all over. I walk in my office and I walk by that and because it was in a different place at, at one time. And I walked by it and I stopped and I'm like, I know I didn't just see that. And I walked back and I looked. There was two green buds that had budded on this dead tree limb. And I thought, yeah. you got to be kidding me. What? Yeah. I got pictures. I, I got pictures to prove it. Right? So, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, we, there's just things happening in the forces realm that we don't understand, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, th these electrical forces, these magnetic forces. Um, and I, I know that some of the new age, you know, that people focus on these things, but the reality is the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. God created mm -hmm. the forces. Anybody can, you know, uh, sense them, feel them at times. And so just because new age people realize they're there mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're new age. It just means they're, they're realizing some of the ways that God created things, but within those forces, there is the abundant life of God. I mean, look what that doggone tree budded for goodness sake, when mm -hmm. the, the glory realm came and there was people experiencing the electricities and, you know, golds manifest in different things, but it's like, you know, I believe, and I was saying all that to say, I believe we're, we're coming into a time where, the this move of God that I believe that we are beginning to see and this new era move of God is is really going to be a new thing. Um, I remember right after that happened, I was like, God, what in the world? And he said, Matt, I want you to not not define revival by anything that you've experienced in the past, because. I'm going to do things that you've never seen before. You've never experienced before that no one has ever seen before. And no one has ever experienced before. And there are going to be new identifying factors to revival. Like, you know, there's some revivals where people would say, Oh, well, that's the laughter that came from that, that revival. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's this manifestation that came from that revival. But, I, but I believe there's going to be things happening as we move forward um, and being open to God doing whatever he wants to do any way he wants to do it that are going to involve some of the things that we're talking about, the magnetic forces, the electrical forces. I mean, we had some meetings recently where phones and computers were getting charged to 100% that were dead just by walking into the, the revival tent. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. so there's definitely uh, there's more there that, mm -hmm. that and, and it's like none of these things I was focusing on like, oh, Lord, charge my computer. No, I mean, not saying maybe we couldn't pray that. I'm just saying I wasn't focusing on any of these things. I was just going after Jesus, mm -hmm. and all these things just started happening out of the blue. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I love that. So um, I'm curious if there's anybody that has any questions for Fiorella before we get out of here. Um, I would love to hear your questions. Is there anything else that um, that God's been sharing with you or any other uh, revelations that you've been receiving about regional transformation, kind of the mechanics of how that works, like that you can share really quickly? <laughs> <laughs> I think that is um, that once you understand, you know, the geolocation that you're in and the spiritual realm attached to it and like the promise of god as to what he wants to redeem and and then um once you have that down and you start really um sort of uh creating a governance for the facets of what you are initially supposed to bring the kingdom um expression through like yeah. for instance you know um whatever your assignment may be, there may be dimensions of, um, like for me, um, with singularity, um, in this, in my regional assignment here in Waxahachie, um, the main structure that the Lord needs me to build now is, okay, what, what does it mean? So the electromagnetic force, for instance, um, and it's not the only force that touches on this, but that's the one that I'm focusing on. Yeah. Um, you know, it affects your, your, time experience hmm. um it also affects um 
you know, uh, language. And um, so with that scope, you know, I understood that one of the main assignments that I was supposed to bring healing into in this region is the realm of timelines, the oh, realm yeah. of um, economy, the realm of creation, um, the realm of uh, the blessing of the land, and then the historical framework of that region. So once I identified those <clears throat> dimensions, and it's a total of really six dimensions, <clears throat> then I would, you know, um, begin to build some teams that um, will focus on, on those things. And we can start building um, models that um, will release, will bring freedom, um, not just people coming into the meetings, but people that um, interface with what we're doing with projects that I'm, you know, that are going to sort of house these things. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, like one of the, one of the, um, if we're talking about economies and we want to hear, heal poverty, yeah. from a region, <clears throat> obviously, you know, there's like a poverty mindset that is attached to spirit of poverty. Right. Um, but in that space of like somebody who has gone through the trauma of, po of, of poverty, and if there is a people group that have experienced a collective trauma of poverty, um, there is going to be all kinds of effects physiologically. So um, poverty and sickness are usually like hand in hand. Yeah. So when um, you're healing, and I apologize for that sound, it's just a train going through. <laughs> um, when you are dealing with that dimension of um of healing. So if God is wanting to release like healing into the land, healing into the region, then what does the neuroeconomics look like in that region? So then you're not just dealing with thoughts and, and thought processes, but you're dealing with the chemical aftermath of certain emotions wow. attached to poverty experiences. And God wants to bring healing into all of those things. But as a body of people, we're asking the Lord, how do we do that? Um, not just as a process of um, osmosis where, you know, people just absorb that atmosphere, but how can we bring models that bring this level of transformation, whether it's through the school system or whether it's through, um, certain events or whatever, you know, we're looking at the whole, you know, spirit, soul, and body transformation of a region and not just a mental scape or a physical scape, but, or a spiritual scape, but the whole three, threefold dimension of it. So, um, so as you are um, identifying those dimensions that you're called into to bring freedom in, or healing into that region, then, you know, as you come into one accord as a group of people, um, God is going to release the, the, the further blueprints and he's going to bring the people that carry the blueprints. Yeah. So when you talk about... Um one of the things you carry is the healing of timelines, the redeeming of timelines. You know, that's what I experienced when mm -hmm. I was there. There was some things in my timelines that, that were broken, mm -hmm. that had been, you know, uh, that the enemy had come in at certain places in my timeline to steal, kill and destroy. And he had succeeded for a portion of that timeline. Mm -hmm. Right. And the locations where those things happened, the Lord brought me back to, and I just received some amazing supernatural stuff that, that was happening. And I know healing was happening in that moment, but there was also just other things that were happening that I couldn't explain these. I was feeling all of that, the electricities, these for the magnetic, I was feeling all these forces and, you know, going in and out and, and just surrounding me um, and the glory of the Lord. Um, but like specifically, is there anything that you're doing like strategically um, to bring healing of timelines, or is that just something that you carry in your ministry that just happens? I think it's both. I think that, you know, what I carry is what I carry, and I just have a grace for that realm to just be released over other people. But yeah. my job has also been, how do I translate that grace into, are there models that I can build to bring people into the reality of the incorruptible, which is really timelessness? You know, and so then you start touching into 
really that domain of immortality and the incorruptible, which is um, in essence, is like the expansion of healing into its fullness. Um, and so what does it, so part of my job and the way that I translate that realm into something that people who are maybe in the world can interface with yeah. is I built a research institute where we are building a model for a, um, what I'm calling an ionic mind, which is a, an eight and like an ageless mind. And, um, and it's rooted in a gateway of wonder and, um, awe. But I am, you know, me and my team, we are looking into the mechanics of how can we bring the greatest level of neuroplasticity and neurogenesis mm, and yeah. heart um, behavioral changes or even just um, senses being awakened that are supernatural? You know, what does it look like and how can we begin to navigate um, and model of the incorruptible and the in, 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 in immortality? Um, but from the lens of awe and wonder, um, that sort of helps people. It takes it out of the space of like the scientific mechanism and more into an experiential space. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that when we understand um, governance and we understand how God wants to bring regeneration and resilience into into the earth and into culture, um, we need to start asking ourselves and we need to ask the spirit of wisdom to teach us how to translate that reality into a reality that the world can experience. And, you know, we, we forget that everything is just connected in some way or form when, when the Lord is really revealing the design. And we think that things that haven't been connected are connected, but, um, you know, like, for instance, like Jeff Bezos is really a fan of immortality. Like he wants <laughs> yeah. hired, you know, some scientists to work it out. Right. And then there's like all these other naysayers. For instance, work it out. Just work it out. Let's just work it out. Yeah, it can't be that hard. Happen, right. You want to live forever. And then you have like Elon Musk, who I love, you know, who is not really for like the immortality stuff. He's, yeah. He thinks that it's a bad idea because people you know, like the old won't die away and the new ideas can't come into being. And then <laughs> and then there's all the mathematics about it, you know, where um, like if people were immortal, would, would they really live forever? Like statistically, what are the chances of them having accidents? You know, and so this mathematically, like your 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 odds increase as time goes forward. Right. So is immortality really like possible and all this stuff, right? I wouldn't be a good candidate. Accidents, you know, hey man, that just, they but happen. But <laughs> they have not taken into account. And this is where the wisdom of God really comes into the, into the whole framework of it. What they have not taken into account is that when it's done in God, I believe that when immortality and the incorruptible reality of, of the finished work of the cross begin to take um, root in our lives, um, we're going, it's not just about living forever, but our cognitive capacities that would make us prone to certain accidents will have shifted because we are experiencing a different level of the mind of Christ. So it's not just expansion of life, but the upgrade of from glory to glory, our mind, our brain is being able to do things that it wasn't able to do before. And they haven't taken that into account, but you can't really take it into account because there is no grid for that, you know, so they can't. No. So there's, you know, there's all this, um, there's all this science behind it. But I mean, there's so many, um, I mean, there's like research centers that are called like um, resuscitation centers hmm. where they study um, how to bring people back from the dead. It's like what they study and, um, and how to figure out, they, they're trying to figure out, you know, um, if somebody dies, like when somebody dies, their um, cells die exponentially. Like as when somebody's dead, like yeah. is dead, like everything in them dies start, like, yeah, starts dying. so exponentially. And so they're having a hard time reversing that exponential death process, like that rate of decay. But um, so it's like it gives you a grid of really what Jesus accomplished in his resurrection. But when Jesus raised Lazarus, everything came back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But even just. Um, like scientifically that what would be necessary for that to happen and not be like catastrophic, 
yeah. you know, just bringing somebody back to life and causing just major combustion in their body, you know, ha from happening and things that you don't really think about, but it gives you a greater appreciation of like the actual miracle of like, wow, you know, the way that God did it. Yeah. And, um, and when Jesus was, was resurrected, like he was also in, you know, there was a realm of glory that his body, you know, was experiencing it. He wasn't fully glorified because he hadn't ascended yeah. yet, right. but even just to the point of ascension and into glorification, which is really the, 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 the measure of immortality is that, you know? Um, so having faith and, and believing for when, I, when we're thinking about timelines and we're thinking about restoration of timelines, it's not just about the linear timeline or the experience of an event in your timeline, but it's also connected to your time identity. Uh, yeah. um, you know, because however old you are is part of your identity. It puts you in a set, in a certain social construct and a cultural construct. Um, yep. All your friends are, revolve around that, what you do and your expertise and your credentials. I mean, everything is yeah. framed around that point of age. But really, what is age? Are you however you old you are or are you your epigenetic age? Or are you whatever, you know, met, metric of time you have? And so when we are experiencing the incorruptible and death is swallowed up, um, when we begin to experience that level of power and life in God and we begin to move according to the faith of that realm and build models out of that realm, then we're going to be able to translate that sort of nebulous, you know, miraculous space of like transformation of timelines. Um, and it's just going to be t completely different. Yeah. You know, I think that, again, like when we hear the verse, um, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, I think most Christians just think just magically our minds renewed, but they don't think about physically what's happening to our brain when that is happening. We have these neural pathways that are, you know, set. And a lot of scientists would say that after a certain age, your neural pathways are set. You're not like, they're not going to just change, but the reality is they can. Um, mm -hmm. But when it's done supernaturally, like I love that, that you're looking in or studying that or where you guys are going after neuroplasticity and, you know, uh, the renewal of the mind is literally changing our neural pathways. And like the ones that have caused, you know, uh, where the enemy is used to steal, kill and destroy from our lives and getting those out of the way and creating new ones that, that have the truth and the DNA of heaven um, operating through them. I, I love that. Yeah, because, you know, we, we think of a new language as like language between people. Yeah. But it's also your chemical language. Mm. You know, how the chemicals inside your body are communicating and are carrying information as much as the electrical currents through your brain and your nerves and all of that. There is a language um a an ancient metabolism mm. you know that god wow. has created within us and if we're wanting to see new language to give a grid we also have to see that language um chemically and electrically and and all that's what the full transformation entails and so even just the conversation of language um you know has to has to impact even on that micro level that we won't normally wouldn't even think about you know? Yeah. Wow, so. man. Well, this has been really good. Um, man, I just, I love talking about this stuff. I could talk about it all night. Um, but, uh, you know, I would, uh, just ask you guys to think about people that have kind of been either just stuck in a rut of just doing things the same over and over again, that have had a hard time uh, breaking out into new ways of thinking and share this with them, mm -hmm. send this to them, um, you know, put their name, tag them, do something. Uh, we really need to, to have these conversations more so that we can expand these conversations, um, in the body of Christ. And I'm really thankful that you're able to come on. This is some really good stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to getting down to Texas sometime in the near future. Um, I just love what you're doing. I love what uh, everything, what, what your ministry is doing and what you guys are going after. Um, 
I just love that you're going after things that that are not really many people are going after, you know, uh, but definitely um, I know that there is a grace and anointing on your life for it. And I'm excited to see uh, the fruit. Uh, definitely excited to see the fruit of, of everything that you're doing for the kingdom. So um, thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, would you pray a blessing over everyone uh, on the broadcast? Yeah. Father, I thank you for every person drawn to this broadcast, Lord. And I ask right now, Holy Spirit, that your presence would begin to move upon their lives, upon their hearts and upon their minds, and that you would release a greater understanding, that you would release a greater paradigm. God, I thank you for supernatural shifts, Lord, yes, God. that scale, God, mountains of limits. God, I thank you for those limitations being broken off of people's lives. I thank you for the alignment in the realm of timelines, Lord. I thank you, Father, for um, every process, God, in their hearts, Lord, that has um, that has offered them a grid, Lord, and, I, and I, I pray right now, Lord, that those grids would be sanctified and expanded in you, Lord, that they would begin to see what they did not see before and hear what they did not hear before. I thank you, yes. Lord, for awakening them. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for coming on tonight, guys. Um, again, we're here every single week, every Monday at 7.30, um, we're going to be talking about the apostolic. We're going to be talking about new language for the apostolic, how to implement practically these concepts and principles into your lives so that we can see his kingdom come, his will be done in every region that we're all called to love you guys have a blessed night and we'll see you next week.